Hello friends, welcome back to more F1 Manager 22. My name is Yoden, and I want to stop real quick and just say thank you so far if you're still with me in this series. I've really been having a lot of fun. I hope you have been too, and I realize that I've not really stopped to just give my impressions on the game. I've played a lot of simulations out there, a lot of management games. Obviously, there's not a ton of motorsports managers out there. Literally, Motorsport Manager is, is kind of the biggest name, and it was heavily modded. And comparatively, like, from the ground up, designing around Formula One, I've really enjoyed this experience. And, and even last race, I found myself, most of it was cut out from what you saw, but I found myself over the shoulder with the drivers in their cars for almost every lap. And I really don't get that involved in these games in the past. So I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun. I love the mechanics. For me, the content, the, the core of the game is well established. It's well designed. Obviously, there's going to be some bugs to work out, but I haven't found that many. There's more like questions like, is the ERS buggy right now? The calculations for fuel stuff is a little bit weird, but it seems like they're tweaking the balance in the last couple days before launch. I'm really excited about that. And the only other stuff that I would appreciate is as we continue to go on in development, I'm hoping, again, this is Frontier Developments, by the way. This is the devs for Elite Dangerous. This is the devs for, um, was it Coaster Tycoon or, or whatever the Planet Coaster, right? These are, these are massive devs. This is a massive development studio. I don't expect this to be a one and done type of game. So I'm hoping in the continued development, we might see improved graphics around crashes or just drivers closely interacting and having those moments of drama on the track where you know somebody pushes somebody wide and they get on the radio to start complaining about it and this is kind of stemming from me just watching the race in spa a few minutes ago right i mean like lewis hamilton drove up over the rear wheel of fernando alonso and got catapulted into the air and came back down and kind of damaged his chassis so stuff like that obviously you can only have so many scripted events but i'm hoping that spectacle of F1 continues to be improved. Like the core of it is fantastic. The cake is delicious. Put some funky little figures on the side. Let's let's coat on that icing. I think that's where the game is going to really get a, a little bit more polished down the road. I don't know if there's any plans to incorporate F2 or F3 where you can play as an F2 or an F3 team, or if you have the ability to customize and bring in your own team. I really don't know what the design plans are past launch, but I guess we'll see. But so far, really having a lot of fun. Uh, by the way, the, the driver that we just picked up for our backup driver happened to do fantastically well this weekend, which was kind of funny in real life. So that is our backup driver, Jack Doohan, actually, uh, I don't, I guess I shouldn't spoil it if you're an F2 fan, but you know what? You should be on top of things, my friends. So Jack Doohan won his race in, in Spa in F2. I won't spoil the F1 race, mostly because I haven't finished it. Uh, but there we go. So we are sitting before the next circuit, which is Catalonia, Barcelona. Very exciting times. We have a couple more really iconic races coming up, I believe. So we've got at least a week of a gap between the Spanish Grand Prix. Then Monaco is going to be a big one. Let's take a look at Monaco. What are we expecting for rain? Oh, sad. Only 16% chance of rain. A little bit bummed out. The Monaco event this year was an absolute soak fest. So that was very interesting to see a super wet Monaco. Still haven't found a rainy day yet. Really hoping that at some point we get a nice wet circuit. Brazil. No, that's all right. This is actually Canada. 42% chance of rain in Canada. The UK permanent 100% chance of rain. We've got the Red Bull ring. I mean, this is obviously way <laughs> these chances of rain. I think that this is a historical chance of rain, maybe. But I am hoping that we get to experience a wet race at some point in our first calendar year. Okay. Let's pick up where we left off at the end of last episode. Charles Leclerc has claimed the checkered flag at the Miami Grand Prix. Fantastic job. Again, the Ferrari team is absolutely kicking butt and taking names. The board is quite happy with us. Post-race update, drivers excited, things happening, yay. Um, defending performance of Kevin Magnussen could be improved. That's a good point. We do actually have some development points to issue out. And... I, I guess we could put a couple points into defending. Kevin is 29 years old. I honestly would prefer his control to be a little bit higher. We really need these races to count. Not, not every single race, but I would prefer that he doesn't have his own spins, his all, his, you know, his own self-induced kind of incident. So we'll put a couple of points into the control there for him. 
Meanwhile, Mick Schumacher, I think I'm going to go ahead and put into... It's pretty average across the board, isn't he? Let's do a little bit more cornering. We have decent cornering performance, so maybe putting a couple more points into cornering would not be too bad. And then Jack Duhan. Oh, we already have a development point. So I'm going to start pumping those into smoothness to bring him up to average with the rest of the team. There we go. What's on the docket? And in this calendar, we've got the driver media appearance. Have we been doing these, by the way? These sponsorship app, um, these sponsorship things. Have I been participating in these? I assume that these just happen without me having to take an active hand in it. Uh, if we go to sponsor... This is where I just was. So additional obligation requirement, sponsor event, 20 rate. It doesn't tell us where we are. I'm just, I'm guessing this just happens. This is stuff you negotiate at the, the start of the season and it just happens as you go throughout your racing calendar. A couple of sponsorship obligation events have finished. We have uh, suspension is lo low stock. We've already kind of discussed this. We are okay with this, are we not? Because it's the newest suspension that they're complaining about. We are going to have our two new side pods here done relatively soon. Yeah, it's just this new suspension that is just a moderately amount, like a, a tiny bit improved. Now, I don't really know if I want to put a lot of development into that. Let's build one more suspension to make a nice even four. I know that's really weird, but that way we'll have a set in case both drivers crash into each other. We'll finish that up soon-ish. For this next race, my plan, there we go, there's our new side pods manufactured. My plan for the next race, by the way, is to completely skip Q, uh, practice and qualifying and just give you a race summary, uh, before the race, I should say, a pre-race summary. That way we can spend more time on the race itself. Side pods have been manufactured, fantastic. Let's go ahead and install this on car one and car two. There, oops, wrong thing. This is the model two that we're looking at, right? So we've got a, a slight improvement across the board. I do this and you can actually see in green what the improvement is. So we're talking about a 0.3% uh, gain, a 3 tenths percent gain in some cornering areas in terms of the dirty air quality, a little bit less engine cooling quality. And speaking of the engine, we probably need to be a little bit more aware of how we're doing with the usage of the gearbox and the rest of the powertrain because I've been running the drivers aggressively on the engine. Remember, we've been we've been pushing them pretty often. We've, I've been using the the uh, the push hard command. We're already on our second engine for both drivers, and the quality is only going to continue to deteriorate. I do assume that we are going to have to buy a new engine at some point later in the season. We'll probably get a grid penalty, but I might double it up so that we're just basically out one race and we we just suck for one race and then we have our new parts. Not the end of the world, but do want to be careful. I ran the drivers really hard last race, so need to be a little bit more cautious about that usage. Look at all the updates coming through here soon. Scouting center, uh, scouting department upgraded in 17 days along with new weather center, CFD simulator and wind tunnel also upgrading. What about the driver stuff? Simulator, staff facilities, race simulator. This is going to be an increase that would give them a 60% increase in their experience gain. I mean, really grooming our drivers. I, I love that idea of, of homegrown talent kind of, you know, sort of speak and in, in, in internally bringing up a young driver and having them gain the most experience possible. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm, I'm spending very aggressively, but these are kind of cheap upgrades. And we, again, are getting about $5 million per month. Team Hub, this is going to increase the morale of both the drivers and the staff. You know what? Why not improve the hub too? Let's go crazy. Haas is just blowing money left, right, and center. The board is like, oh my God, what are you doing? You have spent so much money. I love that. I think you're literally board confidence goes up if you have a better board room. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, let's upgrade the board room. Why not? We're going ham right now. Hospitality area. This is going to give us a little bit more team attractiveness rating. Okie dokie. Sure, we'll upgrade this as well. He's completely out of control, folks. This is going to give us a little bit more weekly income. Probably not really that great until the end of everything. Memorabilia. This is going to be for morale of drivers and team. Also, team attractiveness goes up a bit. Sure. 
Sure. I mean, while we're at it, why, why am I even bothering not upgrading everything? Helipad, again, increasing team attractiveness. If we do all of this ahead of time, maybe at the end of the season, we're going to have a, a new powerful sponsor waiting to, to just bring us, uh, finance our, all of our adventures. Can I see how our board, board confidence, everyone's happy that I'm blowing money or budget team rating. This is our rating band constructors. I'm thinking of, um, where we see the team, whatever that was that I was trying to find a minute ago, the team prestige or what have you. All right. We'll come back to that in a bit. Let's go to, uh, to Barcelona. Use suspension. Just again, that was a spare suspension that I just wanted to pop in. Spanish Grand Prix. And off to practice we go. We'll get that sweet, sweet intro from Crofty and then move on from there. I do think we can guarantee Q3 again. We've been very aggressive about this this entire season. Don't think I'm going to do anything with the fastest lap. And I think we actually got our hot streak. What a finish precision streak. A driver 12th or better every race. I mean, this is our goal. This would be kind of fun. What about a million dollars? So for the next four races, we have to have one driver finish 11th or better for a million bucks. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's be hyper aggressive. Off we go to Barcelona. Formula One has cranked up the heat over Barcelona. The first Grand Prix held here was won by Nigel Mansell after a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with Ayrton Senna. But who will follow in his footsteps this weekend? Long straights and medium speed turns dominate here, but there's something else to watch out for at Barcelona. The air currents are strong and unpredictable, and they'll be giving aerodynamic components a real run for their money this weekend. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. The weekend begins <laughs> here. What if we put the stickers on the back of the car instead? I'm very curious if there is actual wind condition built into the calculations anywhere. Do we have any information about that? It, that is a real thing. You can get a, uh, a headwind or a tailwind to help your car you know, down the straight. That's a huge straight here. I don't really think we're going to do too hot. We do not have fantastic straight line speed. We, I think we're a little better in the corners. Almost all teams are going for, it looks like the expected strategies are a two-stop race. Compound performance, it looks like the softs and mediums are pretty close, split by five one-hundredths of a second. 12 to 17 laps for the softs, 16 to 23 for the mediums. So likely we're going to be, you know, leaning into those mediums a little bit. And then another two tenths off are the hards. So the performance of the hards are quite different than what we're seeing. 75% chance for a historic safety car. And wow, Lewis Hamilton has dominated here the last few runs. Okay, I'll move on to practice, my friends, and give you a bit of a summary after all is said and done. Okay, friends, coming back to you as we are nearing the end of the practice session with a quick update. So, not too bad this session. We have a lot of track acclimatization on Kevin Magnuson's side. He's up at 100%. The took a little bit more fine-tuning to get that setup confidence where we want it. I think we might hit 5 out of 5 on the latest changes that I've made. Yep, How's sure enough. And we are at a great uh, rating. Yes, you are, sir. Okay, understood, Kev. We almost have the nice 100% track acclimatization. Remember, we I did use Jack, John, Jack, Duhan? <laughs> I don't remember which Duhan it is, but we did use Mr. Duhan as our first practice driver. So Mick is missing a little bit of experience, which is no big deal. Not too bad on the timing screens. We're about 10th and 11th. Nothing to do backflips about, but thankfully we are up ahead of again. Alvatari, that is our major competitor for this race. So, Going into Q1, I'll show you where we landed with our build, our build, our setup. Uh, currently, the timing charts, Charles Leclerc is reading, leading ahead of Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez in third, and Carlos Sainz in fourth position. There is our, ooh, our bonuses are kind of gross. Well, oh, interesting. I bet 
if you haven't chosen a setup with co that has a rating to it, you don't get the bonus for the next session. Intriguing. I hope I didn't screw myself up there. I think we'll get the bonus if we go back to a highest confidence setup. But I wonder if that only applied. I think we'll get it here. That would make sense. 84% confidence, 86% confidence. Fantastic stuff. We have plenty of soft tires. I'm going to go ahead and jump us into the next qualifying event, and I'll come back with you at the end to let you know where Haas has wound up. Oh, no. Alexander Albon has gone off on Kevin Magnuson's run. That's not going to be very helpful. We'll take a quick replay a of Let's Alexander wiping out here. Now we see the Williams here. Just straight on through. Just straight. Whoa! Off and a big off. Are you kidding me? Like, complete break by wire system failure. And that That's was a awful. For the team. That was like may have really hurt 60 G's. Own. No kidding, right? That's pretty awful. So Alexander Albon has crashed out of Q1. That means they're not going to qualify in this session. What is Let's the deal? The <laughs> same okay, same magnetic on. corner here. Exactly the same crash, I'm assuming as Alexander Albon. Sure enough, a definite collision there. <laughs> Charles Leclerc head on into the barriers. That's going to be kind of rough for Ferrari. That means that Charles Leclerc is not going to move on to the final session of qualifying. Meanwhile, we got six minutes left in Q2. Kevin Magnuson has a... Uh, where'd his time go? I lost him up there. So he's at about fifth right now. We're probably going to want to send Mick back out if we can. If we have enough time to do that. May as well stay on board here with you since I haven't really spent much time t talking about our qualifying. I'm going to give Mick a new set of slicks to work with. And we'll go ahead and have Kevin reuse the other pair that he used earlier. Get Mick out there first. Get Kevin out there Ooh, right in the middle of traffic, unfortunately. But we'll see what transpires. Nice clean run for Mick. Nobody in front of him. And Mick has a slight increase up to eighth position. Bit of a yellow flag in sector one. I don't see anybody off, but I'm assuming maybe it came out right at this corner again. Everyone finished, though, and Mick is still in the top 10. So two of our drivers are going into Q3. How exciting for Haas. This is fantastic. Nicely done, team. Moving into Q3, we've got Max Verstappen on top. So Red Bull locks out 1-2 position so far with only Carlos Sainz here from Ferrari. Meanwhile, look at that. There's no Alpha Tauri to be found. So we are immediately starting the race in a better position, which is fantastic. Still rocking out with that really high confidence on our car setup. Moving to the third and final session of qualifying. Take a quick peek at our tires. Yeah, so we do have at least one set of slicks for the actual race. I think what I'm gonna do is actually use an existing set first. And then the last run, I'm going to use one of the better sets of slicks. Ooh, we got to be a little careful. We don't have any more any more slicks for Kevin to use. I must have I kind of accidentally went through all the different compounds here. We probably want to save at least one set of softs for the race itself. So that likely means that Kevin's not going to quite have the best tire in the world. Okay. At the end of qualifying, we have Kevin Magnussen qualifying in seventh place with Mick Schumacher up to ninth. What a fantastic turnaround, guys. I mean, we are definitely, I mean, what is it? I don't remember what the best of the rest encompasses. I think it's from fifth place on back, but we are doing really, really well so far. I don't want to jinx us because there's a lot of time left in the season, but... You know, it's almost like we're kind of moving beyond AlphaTauri and starting to really aim for Alpine. I think Alpine, we've been much closer to Fernando Alonso and company than we have with Pierre Gasly. Mick, for whatever reason, has definitely stepped up in the last few races. So he's also pretty much right there alongside Kevin with every qualifying with all the pace. So Red Bull has locked out the front row for the Spanish Grand Prix. We've got Carlos Sainz in third, Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas, George Russell, followed by the rest of the pack. Let's move into race day. Welcome to race day. Hey, thanks, David Croft. I much appreciate it. Moving into clear skies and taking a quick look at the 
circuit post-race practice, post-practice. Compound performance is what I was kind of looking at, because this is... I think we have an estimated compound performance. 0 0.95, 0 0.90, and then a 0 0.95, 0 0.90, so it's the same, whether that gets updated or not. We're still expecting the mediums to be a better performing tire then into the softs, then into the hard, but less degradation each lap as your tires get more worn. Thinking about strategy, but we will lose two tens per lap with the hard tire. Moving into strategery. Let's talk strategery, my friends. We have a two-stopper starting on the mediums, moving into the mediums, moving into the hard tires. It's going to be a 130-34 for the full race. Saving two seconds at the end here if we did a soft tire, medium soft tire. Is there no room for a, a one-stopper? I'm assuming the answer is no to that. It could work out. Again, you know, I'm wearing the tires down to the bone in a way, but the reason we're saving some time here is because we're basically removing 25 seconds or whatever the, the time is for a pit stop here in uh, in Barcelona. So that's that's kind of what we're, we're why it evens out, right? You're thinking, well, the soft tire is so, such a, a much better tire. Yes. But what's happening in this particular strategy, plan C, is that the time you would gain for or with, you know, 18 laps on the soft tires you would gain a lot of time, way more time than you have with the hards. However, by by completely removing a stop from the equation, you're actually saving in the end. So that's, that's kind of where that, that math is coming from. 75% chance of a safety car. Last time, we had a safety car around lap 18. That doesn't mean anything for this race. I'm just trying to think of what we could do if we started to aim for it. What if we, we made one driver aim for the safety car? Well, not not literally aim for the safety car, but yeah, you know what I mean. Let's try let's try Mick on Plan A. I'm kind of curious because we could really have Mick run hyper aggressive for these two stints, like really, really aggressive to be honest, and still have plenty of tire left over. Although I literally just said we should be careful about how much we run the engine. Ugh, I'm really torn about that one. Let's bring this back a notch. Update strategy A to say this is going to be a bit, bit more of an aggressive strat. Otherwise, it's just it seems like it's either going to be an aggressive two-stop or a passive one-stop. Because the only way to really stretch the tires for the entire race is to just kind of run it right on the expected line of degradation over time. Stopping a little bit early would give us some leeway in terms of burning down that hard tire. Medium tire, though, out of the gate would mean we have a little bit more performance to work with, and we'd have to kind of worry about end of race pace instead. I'd rather start with a better tire. The medium is the best tire on the grid currently. This will give us a little flexibility. We can either roll. Yeah, I like this. We're, we're going to start with a medium in either example. We either decide that we want to extend the stint and move into plan B, or we're going to stay with plan A and have a two-stop. That sounds like a pretty smart strat. Meanwhile, for Mr. Kevin, Mr. Kevin, Kevin, I honestly kind of like the same setup. Let's make the same thing happen here. Starting on those mediums, moving into those hards. Yep, that's going to be updating strategy B. So same kind of thing. I'd like to add another strategy that could just be for fun. So we start on the mediums. What if there's an accident early on? Moving into the soft tires. The earliest we can move into the soft tires. A double soft tire here. Would be somewhere along this route. And this is saving us about two seconds overall in time. And this would give us uh, a little bit of leeway with, with extra performance. We can kind of push the pace a little bit harder on those softs. Sounds good. Why not? We'll experiment a little bit. I haven't done a lot of experimentation with strategy so far. Let's jump into it, though, my friends. We're into a round seven. Day for the drivers who've now good taken times. position on the grid. There we see Kevin Magnuson. <laughs> the, the, honestly, the way the commentary this juts in, it. it's, it's so awkward. Spanish I might wind up turning Prix. it off. And 
Lights, lights, lights out, out with Red Bull go. at the lead. Let's grab the over-the-shoulder camera. Once again, I've forgotten to put everybody on attack because that is how I roll. One of these days, I'm going to remember this setting before we'll we even go. These guys, let's catch him. You can see our partner out in front. Please don't run into the back of him. Good job. Mick. There we go. I can see Magnuson in front. Looks like he's gained that position on George Russell. Nope, not nice so much. Head. Side by side. With Russell still on the inside going into the next turn. And we are also getting passed by. I assume that's Fernando Alonso sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. Oh. <laughs> I want to hear more bleeped out commentary. There's a lot of swearing over the F1 radio. I think that, that's a much good, more really realistic good. approach. Oh, man. Mick up there in front of us. No, that's uh, Kevin up there in front of us going over the curb pretty Pass aggressively. You know what? That's something I haven't really talked about much. There are some options for the car performance, and you can tell them to drive in clean air or avoid the curb. I, I think curb is, is when you hit these kind of bumpied areas here. Bumpied? Yes. <laughs> the areas that are raised up to, to encourage the drivers to not cut the corners, the yellow area or the raised red area. I think that's going to damage your powertrain. It's going to damage the chassis. You're also going to be causing excess wear on the tire. Driving in clean air. I wonder what that does. We've got, we're on mix, on board with Mick here. So let's look at Kevin. He actually is making a pass on the inside. Fantastic job, buddy. Keep it up. Passing up George Russell. Well done. I don't want to give them any weird orders just yet while we're still in the middle of the starting of the race. So let's go back into He's some back. settings here. Maybe perhaps. put this on to defend for Kevin and also for Mick. We'll keep it balanced and bring it back a little bit more. I'd like to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, not so much actually for Mick because Mick has the more aggressive strat. And, oh shoot, you know what? I think I want to set. Okay to push. Okay, copy. Why is this showing me? We're, we should be on, oh, we are on the, the two stopper by default. Yeah, that's right. All right, we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. We'll catch these Real guys. Real quick, one thing I haven't looked at okay. yet is where, oh, where are the DRS zones on this track? So we've got the front straight is going to be a pretty long DRS sector. And then the other DRS zone, rather, is kind of towards the back straight, right before the last couple of curves. Got it. That's important for me to know because I generally tend to come in here to manually give our drivers a little bit of information. Also, by the way, I didn't check the weather until now. No real chance of rain on the track. I'm kind of sad about that. To be honest, I'd like a little bit of rain. So... Mick is already on a pretty aggressive run this lap. What I'd like to do is maybe tell him, oh, sending it down the inside on George Russell. Almost there, but we are on that back straight where we're going to have the DRS right now. So we should have DRS because he already was in a detection zone. That's awkward. We definitely should have had DRS here. I will, I will lodge a protest with the FIA. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get my promised DRS there. So theoretically, like a DRS detection zone is like right here. So as long as, or, or the detection zone might be in, in this spot here on the, you can see my mouse on the right side of the screen. It's not where the DRS zone starts. You, you have to be within a second of the car in front at a certain period. So we were very, very close. I'm a little surprised we didn't get it. Try to do some lift and coast and then focus on apex speed. Yeah, okay. Okay, big, bit of an update on lap 8 out of 66. We are still roughly attached to the front pack. It looks like Perez and Verstappen have kind of pulled away a little bit. And then there's a gap, or then there's a, a group here with Sainz, Hamilton, Valtteri, Bottas, and then Magnussen, Russell, and myself, or, or Mick Schumacher, rather, are on board. And then we've got a gap to the Alpine vehicles behind us. So I'm mostly micromanaging Mick to try to keep him attached to the group in front to make sure he gets that that pull in with the with the DRS. Otherwise, it's just kind of a neutral race. I've not really pushed on Kevin too much, and it's very hard, very hard not to be hyper aggressive with my commands. I'm I'm trying to just respect the fact that remember, 
we need these engines to last for the rest of the season. So this, we might have some races like this where it's kind of like, eh, we just play calmly. We, we drive calmly and see where things take us. And we're in a good spot. Like the, the urge, I think, in all of these games is to win, 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 right? That's one of the most challenging aspects of something like Formula One is that sometimes you're not going, you're just not going to win. You shouldn't go into a race thinking you're going to win every single race. Obviously, years down the road, maybe that's a goal, but it's not, it, it would be disadvantageous for our team to push so hard where, yeah, sure, we get first place for like a minute, but then we've blown our tires or we've blown our strategy or something like that. So trying to play a little bit neutral. I will go ahead and give a little bit more of an order to attack and to bring Mick back up with the rest of the pack. I'm going to try to keep him close to George Russell, but George, you know, everyone here has DRS. Like everyone in this pack has DRS with the exception of Lewis Hamilton, who actually just passed Carlos Sainz. They're going to, they're going to play tag back and forth, back and forth. Meanwhile, we're just going to ride this wave for a little while and see how I think Kevin's in the best position to conserve his tires. Mick is probably going to wind up going down to this two stop. I think Kevin is in a position to transfer over to the next plan, which was a two stop. In fact, I kind of wonder like to neutral here. If we send him to light, how quickly will he get past? I mean, George is right down in his bumper at the moment. But all we have to do is, as long as everyone gets that DRS along the straight, we're in a pretty good spot. Unfortunately, I'm also spending okay, more lifting coast, a lot of energy please. trying to keep up with this group. I don't think we're going to be able to keep it up. I think what we should do is harvest, step off a little bit on the gas, and we, you know we're still in front of Alonzo and Akon, which is fine. I don't think that Mick has the pace to keep up with the main start pack right here. Oh, hello. Whoa, what just happened? No way. They just had, I watched Whoa, that live. So you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me, guys. The driving wide and taking a hard left turn is, is nuts. I'm sure this is like a percent chance, but I watched the driver go wide. Okay, that was me passing. That was not the replay I was looking for. It was actually where, hold up. What in the world just happened here? I am so freaking confused. Who hit whom? I thought we got, there's a VSC out. Boy, am I confused right now. This is definitely one of those things where I think the game mechanics uh, need a little bit of love. So we are somehow, we were right behind Science Hamilton in this entire pack. All of a sudden, so this entire group, that's a that's actually a pretty major bug. I'm assuming this is how the engine calculates crashes, but it's it needs it needs some readjustment. What happened was I'm pretty sure it was Valtteri Bottas ran wide, he came back onto the course and then hit us. Now whether or not what you see during a crash happens in the engine, I don't I, I think that's what the difference is. What you see, it looks so good and so real, but it's not always what happens is what's represented in the, in the visual engine. So this isn't bad for us. We're in the lead of this pack. There's a virtual safety car, so there's no overtaking. It's still early in the race. So we don't necessarily need to worry about a, we don't need to worry about a tire change. A VSC means everyone has to basically slow down. If we were like way ahead, you know, maybe it wouldn't be bad to grab a, there's the crash involving multiple cars. Let's see what happens here. Was it Russell? Why watch? Yeah. Yeah. So there was, that was Valtteri. Oh, that's why they all stopped. <laughs> so Valtteri ran wide. He came back and tagged me in the side pod, which doesn't apparently seem to have done anything to me. And then everyone else slammed on the brakes because they just stopped because that's what happens. Not, not so much, but mechanically, it is what it is. The race is neutralized right now, so we're all just kind of more lifting coast hanging keys. out. At the end of the day, this doesn't mean much other than the fact that we're now in the lead of this little pack of friends here. 
which I'm not crazy about because that means we're going to get overtaken in a minute. Unless we can just absolutely gun it at the end of the VSC. Somebody's coming in for repairs, I assume. That's Valtteri, I bet. Nope. That's George Russell somehow. Well, Valtteri Bontis is the one who's behind us, and I'm pretty sure he took damage. Which is kind of surprising. Can we see any damage on the back of, in the front of his car? Pit stop for another team that likely had damage. I think Valtteri actually has a grid penalty. I think that's what we're seeing when we look at the... Yeah, so Valtteri Bottas has a five-second, either a stop-go penalty or a five-second penalty, which is fantastic. So I don't care that he's directly behind me. He'd have to get pretty far up in order to make that five seconds not count. I'm assuming they're doing a stop-go penalty. I wouldn't mind the penalties being more, being communicated in a more clear manner. I would like that improvement as well. I'm going to watch from... Kevin's screen, because I appreciate that view where we're able to see Kevin up front. So as soon as the VSC lifts, we're going to gun it and try to, to break the gap between... There's the virtual safety car. We'll be ending soon. We're going to try to break the gap between us and Valtteri. Okay, if you've got some margin, try to increase the pace a little bit. Okay, got it. It is done and dusted. Let's go ahead and gun it for Kevin Magnuson up front. We VSC also, ending. honestly, VSC need ending. to be a little bit aggressive here too because we want to catch back up to Valtteri in front of us, in front of uh, Mick Schumacher. We're happy with you pushing. I'm happy with you pushing, buddy. Push as much as you can. Yeah, we'll push for a couple laps because we did manage to save a little bit of tire there with the VSC. Mode push. So this is going to roll into, I probably this is going to be a, the, the one-stop strategy for Kevin. I still think Mick is going to be on the two-stopper because we've been letting him run relatively aggressively. Again, trying to have Mick catch up with the car in front before the DRS is enabled again. Right now, DRS, I think, is disabled for at least a lap after the crash. So what has happened is exactly what we wanted to happen. After the VSC lifted... Because we're gunning it so hard, we've already established that one second lead ahead of Valtteri, which is fantastic. So now we're just in our own race. We are going to be in a nice gap be uh, behind Carlos, Sainz, and Hamilton. Mick, hopefully, is going to be within a second of Valtteri when the, VR, uh, when, sorry, when the DRS is enabled again and a, a second in front of Alonso. Lap number 14, taking a quick peek at strategy. I think what we're going to do is move both Mick and Kevin to plan B. Because both of them are doing pretty well on tire maintenance. Kevin, uh, Mick a little bit more so than Kevin. Let's go ahead and move Kevin over to, I don't know, we could also do that. Long into a 130.2... Yeah, so plan B right now is still the better strategy according to the data on the side there. So I think this is going to make sense. It looks like the optimal lap will be one lap off, so we will not have to double stack or anything crazy like that. This might be a bit of a quiet race from here on out. Unfortunately, Mick was not able to keep pace with Valtteri. So we are going to probably get gobbled up here in a second by the Alpine team. That's honestly okay. And I don't think we're in such a good spot this race. I just want the drivers to run comfortably and be calm about it. I'd rather not push the engines any harder than I already have. And even if Mr. Valtteri uh, bought us here, passes us, which he's about to, he still has a five second penalty. So once he goes into the pits, please don't crash. Once he goes into the pits, he's either going to have to take that stop, go uh, the five second penalty on top of that, or he's going to have five seconds added onto his time. Gained for Alfa Romeo. We'll see what transpires. But either way, again, we are Haas, right? We are, we are, according to the game, a last place team way up on the mid table. Okay, quick update here. Race lap 22. Little bit of pit action going on. So most of the other teams are pitting that were on the hard, sorry, that were on the soft tires are in for the pits. They're switching over to the medium. Remember, most of them are going for a two-stop strategy. According to our data, if we stick with the one-stop, we are going to have about seven-second advantage over that two-stop strat. So we shall see. I would expect to get passed by the leaders towards the end of the race. Okay, good job, Kev. That's one. That's awfully nice to see here on lap 24. We got Kevin Magnuson in the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix. We've got... Uh, 
Mick behind in third position with Esteban going into the pits. He's going to be quickly passed here by Max Verstappen in a bit. Uh, Lu per Lewis? I don't know where that came from. Sergio Perez is in second place. I fully expect both the Red Bulls to pass and take a pretty decent advantage if they can ever get around my drivers who are harassing the crap out of them. So we're kind of holding up the lead pack or the leaders so that the other drivers can catch up. I'm fine interrupting the race a bit, a bit. Remember, Ferrari has been at the top of the Constructors' Championship so far, so a double front row finish for Red Bull would put them a pretty huge jump up in the points. And then, Le well, actually, Charles Leclerc was way behind in the race. Is he running long? Yeah, he's still on his first set of tires, so he's still going to have to pit. He is down somewhere once everything is said and done. I think Red he's Bull somewhere around... 13th or 14th position so nothing too crazy at the moment i'm pretty happy with how things are going our nearest competition we still have to pit of course but again both of our drivers are doing very well with tire management okay mick had a bit of a lockup ricardo also ran wide and locked up but neither of these are going to be a safety car type of event mick locked up there on the last turn where we saw a lot of drivers running straight on into the wall so i guess i should be happy that he didn't destroy completely the front nose of the vehicle so still on par for our strategy so kevin is going to go into the pits here in just a second i'm going to speed this up so you can watch the pit stop in this little clip so kevin goes in first ers is fully charged i did have both of them on neutral for a bit and we're i mean we're going to get passed again but keep in mind we are on the one stopper everyone else is on the two stop so this next lap we're going to get the notification that this is now the perfect time to pit which is great. So let's go ahead and open up the pit. Instructions move over to those hard tires. That is our strategy, right? Into the hard tires, sure enough. And no changes, track rubbers low. Lifetime laps, cool means. Pitting at the end of box, this box. lap. Box, box. Copy, box. Let's go ahead and burn this lap, this tire down. Give us a nice in lap. I kind of forgot to set that end of life on the tire so no reason to save the tire anymore all right kevin is in the pits take a quick look at that pit stop schumacher is going to have a pit here in another lap or two yeah one more lap for mick come on three two guys nope 3.4 still pretty rough for the uh pit crew and Kevin exits in 7th place? 6th place, really? That's fantastic. And there's a really huge gap between the leaders and the rest of the grid here. All right, Mick Schumacher is on his in-lap right now, so I've got him just absolutely gunning it. We are going to come out. Let's take a look at behind the leader. 18 seconds behind the leader, so plus 20. Man, there's a huge gap here. That's kind of nuts how big the gap is between us and the car behind, or the cars behind, I should say. All right, into the pits comes Mick Schumacher. Let's do it to it, team. Where's all our money investments? We don't have any. That was kind of weird. <laughs> a little bit of a glitch there in the, on the visual side. In the pits, passing, getting passed by everybody. Yeah, we must have had a much better time when Kevin was up there in third, so he came out at a much better spot. 3.4 stop time, not too fantastic. And then once this is all said and done, let's go ahead and put him back to a standard conservative type of lap setting and take a quick peek at where our drivers are. So this is it. This is our strategy. Kevin Magnuson is in front of Valtteri Bottas, as well as, I can't tell who's next to him, George Russell. They're likely going to pass us on the K-Mag side because we got a, well, no, George still has to pit. And Valtteri is also on an older set of mediums. But they do both have... Let's see, Valtteri's on the better tire per lap. Valtteri's likely to pass us. Russell's going to have to pit, although he definitely passed us anyways. But most of the leaders are still going to, to pit again before the end of this race, because everyone else is still on that two-stop strap. Meanwhile, Mick Schumacher at, in 10th place. Who's in front of him? And what is the situation here? We've got at least a couple more stops. So as long as we keep the timing relatively close... And, but what I mean by that is within, you know, 20 seconds of Fernando Alonso, when they pit, we should wind up being in front of them when all is said and done. 
Okay, quick last bit of uh, update probably before the end of the race because it's kind of smooth so far. Most everybody, as, as far as I know, they've all completed their strategy. So we are the only other ones on a hard tire right now. I'm pretty sure Russell's going to go in here any minute to grab his set of soft tires, which means all of these positions are relatively fixed. Now, remember that the hard tire performance wise is not better lap over lap than the soft tires. So I think the soft tires have a two tenths advantage every lap. Ah, I'm looking for my interval one here. Yeah, so Mick just got passed by Valtteri, for example. And that's okay. That is, again, to be expected. Unfortunately, I think Alonso is pretty far back there. He's only got 10 laps to cover five or so seconds to us. So we are currently sixth and eighth place. That is a fantastic job, once again, by them Haas boys. If I can also keep Mick relatively close to Valtteri, we should be able to keep DRS and stay attached to his bumper. I'm going to speed the race up. We've only got a few more laps left. I guess I can just keep it on this speed right now. No harm, no foul. Kevin's got a pretty neutral race. Honestly, we can push the tires a little bit if we wanted to, but I don't know if there's any point. Although, I always forget to do this. I'll tell you what. Let's charge up for a second for Kevin, because he actually did manage to get the fastest lap recently. Yuki Tsunoda locked up there on turn 12. Our Mick Schumacher is continuing to fight with Valtteri. I don't like the fact that this fight is letting Charles Leclerc get closer. I think he's going to have a run towards the end of the race. Not a huge fan of that. We are. Let's go ahead and conserve a little bit of energy here. I'm setting Kevin up for a fastest lap attempt. Meanwhile, Charles, Charles Leclerc is continuing to build uh, to pull down that lead. Overtake is available. Overtake is available. Yep, got it. Let's go back it. to neutral there. Copy. Copy. All right. This is pretty much Charge it. Off. Where is Kevin? Copy. So he's almost done with his lap. So at the end of this lap, we are going to have him turn everything up to the max and try to give us the best lap possible. Sector two, we've got a yellow flag in sector two. Might have been us, actually, because we are all of a sudden. That sounds like someone's gone yep. wide there. Mick did go wide, so it looks like Leclerc is going to get a run on us, which is not great. We don't have a lot to defend with. Let's have him attack a little bit more aggressively and push and go ahead and deploy his ERS for defense. Otherwise, we're going to go back over to Kevin and pretty much deploy everything for a fastest... Ah, God, I hate these freaking windows. Sometimes I just want, like, if I click in the center, just push. minimize everything. That's what I want. I want to see, want to see the track. Tires are getting a little warm, he says. No doubt about that it would be nice if we were able to grab yuki sonoda towards the back straight because we could use that drs as part of our fastest lap no attempt DRS. we're trying to defend against charles leclerc we've only got a couple laps left so i'll tell you what let's go to neutral harvest and standard charge on i think Copy. charles leclerc is going to get this pass done there it goes we're going to have the rest of this lap and then oh, one wow. more lap. If we can wind up getting him in this back straight, he has to be close to us. So let's harvest a little bit of energy. Last lap by Sergio, uh, Sergio Perez. Got it. Continuing to harvest. We want to stay close. Where's our time to... Uh, there it is right here. So we're 0.2 seconds behind. Let's go to an actual nice view here. Uh, Mac, Kevin, by the way, meanwhile... He did get a fast sector here. So the purple sector, middle sector, means that it is the fastest middle sector of the race so far. He did not have a great first sector. Let's kind of bump up the aggression. No more lifting coast. Try to get a little bit closer to Charles Leclerc here for this last lap. Try to make one last ditch attempt. Set us up for the overtake. Charge maybe off. at the end of this first straight. Because I the last straight that we just finished doesn't look like it's going to have enough leeway for us to go. Copy. There we go. That was uh, the fastest lap or no? Third sector. We got a purple third sector. Did he make it? I don't think he did. Looks pretty good so far. I don't know if that's a preview of the timing or not. Let's go ahead and deploy the ERS. Try to catch up. Yeah, I do not believe he had the fastest sector. It's a little awkward that the timing is still yellow, purple, purple, even though I think we're in a new lap here. Yeah. So he's likely not going to get the fastest lap. Good attempt, though. Well done, Kevin. You did manage to catch up to... Oh, wow. You straight up cut all the way up to George Russell. Fantastic. I don't think we're going to get the place on Schumacher... Or, sorry, on uh, Leclerc. Kevin did manage to overtake Barrett, Russell, though. The line first. Oh, the I didn't replay. want to look at that replay. There it is. I don't care about that. I want to care about Kevin. 
Nicely done, buddy. Can you hold him off, though? Can you hold off George Russell's attack? I think that was the last little bit. Magnuson overtakes Russell. That was the, uh, the now, overtake that I missed. On the Down on the inside. Nothing to it. Well done inside. And then on the outside of that chicane, still managed to have the speed coming out of the turn. Excellent job, buddy. Do we have anything left in the tank? We are good on fuel. We're pretty much pushing to the max. We are pretty much deploying our ERS. So we're, we're pretty much got everything that we can turned on and is going. Meanwhile, Kevin, sorry, Mick is not going to be able to catch up to Leclerc more than likely. We do have the DRS coming up at the start of the turn into the final straight, but it's likely not going to have any end result. Meanwhile, we are quite a bit ways in front of George Russell. Check it Nicely flag. done, my friends. Here comes the last little bit with Kevin on the main straight, and we're not going to catch up to those Ferrari boys, but, oh, just one Ferrari boy at the moment. Whew. But my friends, flag. Haas, we're Haas, uh, and we've great. got fifth place. Do you know how close we are to getting one of those really coveted drive, man. six attempts or six Over times on the podium is our goal. This is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic drive by both Kevin and Mick Schumacher. Very nicely done, guys. Super excited about where Haas is at so far. Again, hoping I'm not absolutely trashing the car <laughs> and the park. Stop throwing Kevin stuff Magnuson out of the car. What are you done. doing? A great You're result. driving me crazy, man. Really well done to the Haas team here. Unfortunately, what is our fastest lap? 120.42. We were just a few hundreds away from the fastest lap set by Max Verstappen, always looking for those extra points. However, my friends, we have jumped up above AlphaTauri with a commanding 12 points gained in this race. We are closing the gap to Alpine. They only got one point in that race. We got a nice, decent 12. I am quite excited about that. Meanwhile, Red Bull did catch up a little bit. We've got 44 points given to Red Bull this weekend, so they're at 171 so far in the constructors standings and the driver standings we've got carlos Sainz and charles leclerc on the leaderboard but red bull chomping away they are continuing to eat up that lead and there are a lot of races left in the season one point experience for mick i think that's what that symbol meant we've got a little bit of practice here for jack duhan I'm pretty hyped. I am pretty pumped <laughs> about how these races have been going. Thanks for joining me, friends. I'm going to go ahead and cut this episode short. I will, or long, or whatever you want to call it. I'll catch you again in the next episode, though. Until then, take care.